Good evening, and please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen for September 26, 2016. First thing is public comment period. Do we have anybody that wants to speak? Yes, I would. Come right up to the podium here, Tom. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, hello. I am Tom Lebeck II. I have been renting apartments for about 25 years in Hampton. At present, I rent 34 year-round apartments in Hampton Beach. I work at the beach and have been at and driven through the beach at least 8,000 8, different days. I have noticed a lot. I go out of my way to look around and pay attention to many different things. I believe that it takes a lot of different people working together to maximize the potential for our success in continuing to make our beach a better place. I believe this is happening now. We have many people in the state and in the town working together with many property owners, business owners, investors, and residents to improve our beach. I think that's great. I have one situation I would like to talk about that seems to be growing and getting worse. There are many aspects to this problem. Since I don't know everything, I don't have the perfect answers. I am asking you to use our resources to look into this and see if we can make changes so the situation will improve. The problem is people parking on our streets in Hampton Beach for many months without moving their vehicles. In the summer, each parking spot is important to many vacationers, residents, visitors, and employees at the beach. A couple of problems created by this are or might be people that live, visit, vacation, or work at the beach can't find a spot without paying. Garbage and debris accumulates around and under these vehicles, and our town can't use our street sweeper to sweep the streets because the vehicles are stationary for months. Possible reasons and or situations that could create this problem might be some of these vehicles are not state inspected and can't be driven on the streets so they are just parked here. Some people might use our streets to store vehicles. Maybe some of the vehicles don't drive properly. Maybe some people just don't care. I don't really know. I have seen vehicles with flat tires for months and people doing mechanical and body work on the streets. I think this takes away from the beach and town. I see nothing fair to the majority of people or the town when this happens. <clears throat> what options do we have? Can we have some type of scheduled street sweeping? Can we have some type of time limits on parking on our streets? Then vehicles will have to occasionally move. I don't know. But I ask the town to please look into this problem and see if something can be done. Thank you for your time and have a great day. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, before, before you go, um, we have talked about that a number of times in the past. But if we do have some sort of public hearing on that, we, I, I'd like for you to be there. I think you just brought up some excellent points. It's not just the beach, we do have our town parking lot uptown. And some of these very reasons that you have said that we have to deal with. So uh, as we move forward, if we do, I'll try to make sure that you get notified that when we do have that, because we'd definitely like your input at that meeting. Okay, I got some pictures too, right? Of I, I, I only picked one street, K Street, I have a place there, right? So I just took pictures, and I wrote a little explanation of the pictures. I have eight pages with different pictures on it, and a little explanation of the pictures. If you want to leave those with us along with one of your business cards, if you have one. I'll write my telephone. I don't have, I yeah, write, write your cards. telephone number on it, and then if, if we do have a meeting like that, which I believe we are going to do uh, in, in, the, in the near future, uh, I can't tell you when, <laughs> but we do need to address parking down there. There's other parking issues around town that we, get, we haven't talked to, but we want to have some uh, input from our citizens, so when that happens, I'd, I'd hope you'd come in. If you put your number on that and get us that, we'll yeah. try to make sure you get notified. If you let me know, I'll be there. Okay, okay. very I, good. Can I, I only brought, I think, That's five just, copies of all my pictures. If you want to bring one copy of it and leave it five, to I us. I brought five to give away, but oh. there's more than five people. That's I thought okay. I'd have enough for everybody. But if you want to put your phone number on one. I'm well aware of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you want to put your phone number on one, we'll, make, yeah. we'll try to make sure that you get notified. Sure. They're just packets. I only, like I said.
And I know you know everything. <laughs> Almost everything that goes on. <clears throat> Okay. Here, give my copy to Fred because I've already seen the. the yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can bring the film. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You brought up some very good points, and we thank you for doing that. Thank you. And the first page explains what I what I think or feel about the pictures on the other pages below it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for coming in, Tom. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Everyone. Have a great day. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Anybody else on a public comment? Public comment? Wow. Yeah. Uh, Chuck Rage, Hampton Beach Village District Commissioner, 121 Ocean Boulevard. I'm, I'm not sure if you watched our last meeting. We had a group of citizens uh, from Brown Ave and the surrounding area come to our meeting hoping that we could help them. They're looking for some type of pathway or sidewalk on Brown Ave. I know there was talk years ago. And uh, I know it's pretty limited on space but maybe some type of pathway as opposed to a full sidewalk, something that could help them. Uh, there's been com a couple near hits <coughs> cars going around the circle there. So I was wondering if you could look into that for them. Uh, I said it'd be nice if they get a petition or, or something. Don't we have some information in our packet about this? Yeah, I'd yeah. actually preliminary send Jennifer at uh, Public Works an email yeah, to get right. some information because I actually had a citizen on Susan Ave. Okay, so they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're looking for something, it, and I know the space is really limited, but maybe even just a small pathway. I think we're going to discuss it under old business. It appears it's going to cost a large amount of money. And I understand that. That's why I'm thinking maybe some type a of pathway article. that's not a full sidewalk to try that, something. Uh, I know it's near the marsh, uh, but it is pretty dangerous. So if you it could. will get discussed later. Right. We'll bring awesome. it up. I'm going to bring it up under old business. Yes. Thank you very much. Very good. Anybody else that would like to speak under public comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for announcements and community calendar. I don't have anything, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I don't have anything, but I'd like to make a clarification. Could you give me a couple of minutes to do that? Absolutely. As you know, I'm the uh, Selectman's representative to the planning board. In last Wednesday night's planning board, an individual uh, made an appointment to discuss the sewer issue up at Liberty Lane and Cornerstone. Now. I don't know why the individual went to the planning board when the selectmen are the sewer commissioners. And it was more, it wasn't an inquiry, it was more of a lecture to the board. And there were a lot of things stated that were inaccurate and not factual. One thing the individual said, and I want the public to know is not true, was that the town was negotiating with the developers to hold the developers harmless to any problems that might exist with the uh, sewer. It's just the opposite. The town stated, didn't negotiate with anybody, that, those pro that the town would be held harmless and that the problems would be fixed or nothing would go forward. The individual also suggested that nobody was paying any attention to what was going on up there. As we know, the DPW has done extens extensive research on the problems up there, the ownership, the problems with the pipe, the condition, the quality. So I just want people to know that this is something that has been looked at, is being looked at, the town manager, the town council, the DPW, the board of selectmen, everybody is taking this extremely serious, and there won't be any development up there until everything is settled to the town's benefit so that the taxpayers, the taxpayers are protected. And I just wanted to clarify that because I think if people watch the planning board and watch this specific individual, they would get the wrong idea. Thank you. I think that you should mention, too, that we've had many meetings about it. Many. Many, many meetings, and some of them are in private because it's due to litigation, and Mrs. Wolseley is badly informed on this one. Absolutely. Thank you. Very good. Phil. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, a Marine that passed away this weekend, uh, George Maston, and uh, he's uh, just a, a fabulous uh, seacoast and uh, uh, fabulous uh, public servant uh, and a, uh, a Marine through uh, Korea in combat operations in Vietnam, badly wounded with Fox 2-7. Uh, came back, like unlike a lot of people that uh, stay around the flagpole or stay in Washington and make lots of money, George came back here and really uh, dedicated his life to Hampton and to veterans' causes, was instrumental in the American Legion uh, and other veterans' uh, um, pursuits and efforts. Uh, he was the uh, last uh, in public that, that I saw him at the 9-11 ceremony. 
uh, and always was a leader in the community. But uh, a great United States Marine, a combatant, uh, tip of the spear, head point, a rifleman, and just a, a great public servant. And uh, when we use that term public servant, uh, we could put uh, Marines like George uh, at the top of the food chain. So God bless him. God bless his family. Uh, com the former commander and another fine Marine in Hampton resident, Ralph Vitello has Ralph's pick. It's on the web, Ralph's pick.com. He's got some great pictures, some great stories. Uh, and along with that announcement today was uh, uh, the Grondins uh, had a marriage in their family. Uh, congratulations to that fine Hampton family. <clears throat> um, went to a birthday party. Uh, there's a Falcone Circle in, in Hampton uh, dedicated to uh, a U.S. Army captain from Hampton, uh, Captain Falcone with the United States Army, 4th Infantry Division. He uh, sacrificed his life on 11 November 1967, also a former Marine. His granddaughter, great-granddaughter, is now uh, in uh, the uh, wonderful care of uh, Kayla uh, Bean and Robbie Bean, attended that uh, one-year birthday party uh, this weekend. So happy birthday to little Vera Bean, the great-granddaughter of uh, Captain Falcone, United States Army. There's some great public service people uh, in this community. Uh, there's first responders and the citizens of this community. Uh, some people um, uh, carry on as public servants and sometimes don't get the message, Jim, but uh, there's some others that uh, really do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick. Yes, um, we have... Uh, I have a let, I, something to read here from Hampton Parks and Recreation. It's about the Active Seniors Social Club. I think they have a new name, Active Seniors Social Club. Hello, are you new to the area or just ready to get out and involved? If you are, then join the Active Seniors Social Club. It's a great place to learn about what's going on around town as well as make new friends. Come and see some great entertainers, enjoy some laughs, great music, and make lasting memories with wonderful company. It's the second Thursday of every month. The time is 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., and they gather at the Methodist Church in Hampton on Route 1. <clears throat> and uh, I'd like to uh, uh, wish uh, Senator Preston um, he has some health issues. He's not feeling well, and baby people can keep him in their prayers. Um, <clears throat> so he's doing pretty well, but he's uh, going to need some people, you know, people to wish him good health. Thank you. Very good. Another another person who passed away in town this week was uh, Ron Remick. Ron was a longtime businessman in this town, and he is. Uh, uh, he was also an elected official uh, at one point. I believe the planning board or the zoning board, yeah. uh, but Ron, Ron spent a lot of time in this year, this town, and did a lot of good. And uh, again, you talk about good people. I believe he was also a vet. And uh, you talk about people who, uh, who, who have helped this community over the years, and, and he is one of them. One of the other things, and, and while Jim was bringing up the fact that the uh, planning board had a visitor, I was also watching the budget committee and noticed they had a uh, visitor this week. Uh, <coughs> And some of the comments that were, were, were brought up there were um, uh, inaccurate. And so um, I, I'll ask the town manager just to bring us up to speed on the, the paving warrant article because it, it was said that we didn't follow that warrant article. And I want to make sure that uh, the people know that it was correct. There was all the streets that were done on that plus some. Uh, there was one that, that wasn't. And could you explain that, please? The one that wasn't, Mr. Chairman, was uh, Acorn Road. Um, Acorn has never been accepted as a public highway, and we're not sure that it is. And there is a 1951 decision of the state Supreme Court that says we may not spend public funds on private property. So we've asked town council, and we are researching the registry of deeds. We are researching the history of the road. Uh, we think it's a public road, but we need to prove it. And uh, until that is done, it won't be paid. But once it's done and it is, we can show it's a public highway by dedication or some other means, then we will pave it. And I think that's the only road we missed. Public Works Director is here, I believe. And uh, I guess not. Yeah, he's, up there. He's, he's in the back. He's, he's in the back. 
I believe you paved every single road in town that was on that list plus several. And uh, the reason the several were done was because during this past winter, they broke up and had to be fixed or we would be, in fact, plowing up the pavement this coming winter. So we've done a lot more than we said we would do. <coughs> Uh, and we're holding on one road so we can verify that, in fact, the law allows us to do the work. I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, sometimes things get set out there, and when, the, when uh, they're not quite as accurate as, as people probably should be, uh, I think it leaves the wrong impression on the voters, and I think we need to, to make sure the, you know, the voters get the right impression uh, that the work is getting done to, as how we ask them to vote for. Yes, sir. Very good. Consent agenda. We have a petition for underground gas line at 6 and 7 Lancaster Street. That is it. I'll move the agenda. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Approval of minutes, September 12th. I motion that we approve the minutes of September 12th. I have a motion. Second. Se Second. It. All those in favor? Unanimous. September 19th. Minutes. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, actually, it's Thank four you, and one because you weren't here. <coughs> okay. So four and one. <coughs> uh, next thing is appointments. First one on the appointment list is uh, Chief AOP. Paramedic training proposal. Good evening. Tonight, with your indulgence, I ask, uh, I ask the EMS officer, Nate Denio, to join us to help explain what we're doing and moving forward. Hi, Nate. Uh, this evening, we're here to talk to you about a proposal that we put in front of the town manager to send two paramedics to paramedic school, I'm sorry, two firefighters to paramedic school. Uh, we've had a great successful history of doing so in the past. Um, we, as a town, chose to go to the advanced life support level or paramedic level in the early 90s. And beginning as far back as uh, 1993, we began sending paramedic, uh, firefighters to paramedic school to become certified as paramedics. Our most recent graduates were in 2013. There were two. They were sent as a pair so that they could work together. Um, in the course of the history of this program, we sent five. There have been a couple other programs that we've, that we've dealt with, but we've sent five teams to paramedic school through the program that we're looking at, which is the New England Emergency Medical Services Institute, correct? Okay. And uh, formerly known as the Elliott Program. <clears throat> as paramedics, they're able to provide a higher level of care. They learn an advanced medical assessment. They're able to interpret EKGs, provide advanced airway management, administer several medicines, and provide pediatric care that's not available at any other level. Um, we've had a 100% success rate for all of the attendants to the paramedic program. And I can tell you that uh, most of the, all of the people that have gone through have either are still working at Hampton Fire Rescue or they have uh, completed 20 years and retired out. Um, but they, we have a great history of the paramedics working for us for a long time after their certification. Nate has uh, been a graduate of that program, so I'd like to let him have the floor and explain to you what's, what's going to happen. Yeah, so like the chief said, I was a graduate of the program from 2006-2007. Uh, it's a 1,200-hour long uh, education process that takes about 16 months to complete. Uh, along with those education hours, that's lecture and uh, didactic time and lab time at the Elliott Hospital facility. The uh, students do extensive work in the field, uh, doing clinical hours, such as uh, time in the emergency departments. They do ride time with other ALS services. They spend time in ORs, learning how to intubate live patients. Um, pretty extensive training, uh, very aggressive. Those students would expect at the height of the program uh, from like two months on to be doing something with their schooling every day of the week, um, including coming to, to work to their, their full-time job here at Hampton Fire. So uh, it's a pretty intense class. Uh, we've had a lot of success with it and a lot of good outcomes. So we fully support uh, this program. And what we did is we contacted the school to see what would be available to us. There are two slots available. So we would we propose sending two. Uh, as a team, they'll be able to work with each other, help each other through the homework part of things. And if there is a sickness or illness one day, uh, the other teammate will be able to, to work in concert with whoever might be going. Uh, the cost of such program is divided into several parts. Chief among them is the tuition. 
Uh, as the document that I handed out to you shows, the tuition based on the 2016 quote was $10,712.71. Uh, there's going to be a small cost for supplies and entry testing fees. Today we had four candidates go through the testing process, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the supplies are minimal, but the uh, idea is that they would have their own stethoscope and, and sort of supplies that they're going to need on clinical. Um, the, there's an associated cost for covering shifts, which will be left vacant in their absence while they're at school, uh, and participation of classes and clinical experiences. We've estimated these costs to be approximately $7,030 over the duration of the program. So times two, the total cost of this education is an investment of $36,025. Uh, this will be paid out over time, over the course of 16 months. Uh, the level of service will be increased immeasurably as we gain two paramedics. The cost of the program will be covered by the Fund 27 Emergency Medical Services Fund. Uh, this is one of the primary reasons for the creation of this fund, education and supplies, including the purchase of um, ambulances. So we set forth, I believe it was uh, three months ago, we had posted the, the opportunity for two slots, and we had four people decided they wanted to go to paramedic school. And so we created, and you'll see on the second part of the agenda, it talks about um, a new policy that's an internal policy that we created to make the process much more fair. And what we did is we gave a weight to each of the parts of the program that the, the paramedic interns would need to, to do before they even got admi um, admitted to the school. First is a written exam, which occurred today. The written exam is general knowledge, plus some medical background. Uh, it's administered by NIMSI, which is the program that we're looking to send them to. It's a graded exam. They do get a raw score. Uh, the company officers that see them on a daily basis have input, and the medical director for our department, who is Harry Wallace out of the Portsmouth Regional Hospital, has input as well. Uh, we're trying to make this as fair as possible and keep the nepotism out of it. So in order to select the two um, candidates to go out of four, we're, we've put, put forward this policy with the intention of making it as fair as possible. And we're happy to answer any questions. Do you have anything you want to add before we bring around? No, nope, okay. I think you summed up very well. Um, yeah, Chief, great report. And uh, I appreciate how you outlined all the costs, including the overtime costs. And I think it's a, uh, it's a good, definitely a good idea. We want to maintain the uh, Hampton Fire Department's great reputation that it has, and also that um, the policy put in place, very great idea, you know, inform everyone what they need to do if they want to uh, be the two to go. So I like it. Thank you, ma'am. Good deal. Jim? And currently, how many EMTs do we have? EMTs? Or paramedics. Yeah. Paramedics, I'm sorry. So we have uh, 18 paramedics in our ranks. Okay. And what do you need to? Well, um, it, it, this is a this is a moving scale, right? Okay. So as uh, as we see, we're hiring new personnel, and you know that I've come before you with a lot of new bodies lately. Um, we have it out there that paramedics are preferred. Recently, we've hired advanced EMTs. We haven't had the paramedic list be very long. In fact, that's uh, that's the case across the state. There's a lot of vacancies right now, and uh, one of our local fire chiefs just over the border has even taken to calling all of the paramedics on the list to no avail. Um, it's a very short list right now. Uh, so the the availability of paramedics coming into the door is very low right now. By making the investment in these two, whoever they might be, the candidates might be, this is a uh, this is a look down the road because it's if they start in the, the course is starting January 9th of 2017, but it's 16 to 18 months from then that we'll see them. So it's two years from now. So based on that, it depends on who may retire or whatever situations might occur. <laughs> They'll be filling the ranks. So currently what we're looking to do is have a minimum of three per shift, and I'd love to see four per shift. Okay, to feel adequately Correct. staffed. Yeah. Yeah, good. And, and you said the money comes out of a fund, so it's not. It's the 27 fund, which is the Emergency Medical Services Fund, the same one that we've come in front of you to request to uh, purchase the ambulance, um, you know, supplies such as the stretchers and things like that. And so this is a part of the insurance revenue that's collected upon doing the calls. Insurance companies are billed. As you know, you've assisted us with the, uh, the uncollectibles, and, and so this fund is not foreign to you. Um, it's not going to hit the taxpayers uh, at tax time. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Phil. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. Uh, thanks for your service. Uh, you had mentioned that you uh, looked at New Hampshire Technical Institute. They offer a master's program versus this is a certificate program. Is they that offer correct? an associate's, they, an associate's program. Um, 
the, the NIMSI program is really uh, firefighter friendly due to the scheduling of classes. It's actually the, the clinical coordinators are both uh, full-time firefighters, so they kind of get um, where we're coming from with our, our work schedule, um, the, the calls we see, our experiences. So it, it does work out a little bit better than the uh, NHTI program. Additionally, they also have a component that um, they, they will go with uh, Granite State so if the candidate does decide that they want to get an associate's degree through the program, what they'll do is they'll apply to Granite State for the uh, extracurricular or the, the co-curricular activities they, in English. They right. could earn 35 credits to Granite State. From so the they can roll that over. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. And uh, the cost that NHTI was much more expensive, is that what your it was. Yeah. MO dictated? Thank you. Uh, we understand uh, where the funding comes from this. There is a, uh, 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 a statement that there will be a 5% increase for firefighters that gain this certification, is that correct? Yes, That's correct. correct. And where does that 5% come from in terms of... Uh, that comes from the EMS fund that's hit once a year to make up the medical incentives. That's correct. Thanks, thanks for having the answer to that. Um, appreciate that very much. Um, so this is a win-win all the way around, and it does not, does not affect the, uh, the tax base, does not affect the tax dollar or any tax increase. It's a wonderful program, great work. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> yes. My, you know, I always have been a big proponent of um, the ambulance service. It's really a, wo a wonderful thing. Just this morning, to, when I was coming home from the gym at 6 o'clock this morning, or 6.30 this morning, um, I saw the fire truck and an ambulance right next to where I used to live, Rusty. Um, and I went, I stopped because I saw my friend standing on her deck, and she just couldn't say enough nice things of how you uh, got there so fast and you know her husband was still in the being worked on by the team and I talked to her late this afternoon and <clears throat> her, you know he's still at the hospital and she really credits the good job that you did to get him there excellent so thank excellent. you yeah they did a great job for sure yeah Thank you very much. Thank you. Just again, speak to you. Um, we, we spent sent a number of people to the class now, and our retention rate at keeping these employees so that we haven't lost a single person that we have spent the time and money and in investing in, in them to go to paramedic school. So our investment has been well, yeah. well spent, very well. And the four candidates are all really um, great candidates, and they're invested in the town of Hampton. They've been employees here for for quite a few years, so. Very good. So, and you make a motion. Make a Second. motion. You accept this. We accept the the grant or the or the the expenditure of the uh, thirty six zero twenty five forty two for the for the sending two paramedics to the uh, to the school. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you so thank much. You. There you go. Good night. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. And do you have the operational policy. Is that, that's, is that, that's that's all part of that. Too? That's correct. That's uh, that's. You don't have model. to accept that. That's nope. I'm that's just letting all, you know what we're what we're doing. Yep. Correct. So, Very good. Do you have any questions? I'll answer those two. Okay. I think we're all set. I think Great. you did an excellent job answering that beforehand. So the next one is Chief Ayot, Chief Sawyer, Jean, uh, Jason Bashad, Town Planner. Jason is not available tonight. Jason, Jason not has a family uh, medical issue that he's dealing with, <laughs> so he sent okay. his apologies for not being able to make it. Hi, Chief. Good evening. As you're aware, the town is required to have a hazard uh, hazards mitigation plan in place uh, due to state law and federal law. Uh, the last plan that we had was back in 2011. We're due in 2017 for our renewal, so the process began. Um, actually, at the end of last year, there was an acceptance of a, uh, of a matching grant through New Hampshire Homeland Security to fund this. Uh, as part of this plan, uh, we utilized the same consulting firm, uh, Jane Hubbard, as you recall, was the uh, person that we utilized for our plan back in 2011, and this is who we chose to uh, assist us in this endeavor again this time around. As you can see, if you all received a copy of the, the, the proposed plan that has been accepted by FEMA, yep. and what this meeting essentially does is begins the two-week commentary period uh, that's required uh, for this to move forward and become our actual plan. So if there are any questions or if you'd like me to get more in-depth into this, um, but it's very similar to the 2011 plan, 
uh, and I can read you the purpose statement if that will help people at home to understand uh, what that is. Absolutely. Just so you know, we got this plan last week in our packet. So everybody it's also should. on the town website. Okay. Yeah. Very good. So, so I would encourage members of the public that want to make comment, they want to go to the website to review that if they have any concerns about it. But anybody that's looked at the one from 2011, this is very similar with a few modifications based over the years. Uh, a lot of it has to do with our increased uh, building infrastructure and the seasonality, the, the, the increases we're all experiencing with the visitors coming to town. Uh, Hazardous Mitigation Plan was prepared in accordance with the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000, Section 3, 322 Mitigation Planning. Uh, the purpose, this Hazard Mitigation Plan is a planning tool to be used by the Town of Hampton as well as other local, state, and federal governments in their effort to reduce the effects from natural and man-made hazards. Okay, and again, this comes to us through uh, Homeland Security in New Hampshire, and it's also a federal requirement that has a lot to do with any of the funding we may get through FEMA or reimbursements if we don't have this plan in place, we're, we're not eligible for a lot of other funding. And that's really the key note to make tonight that uh, I know there probably aren't a lot of questions tonight. People want to, are going to want to drill down and look at that a little bit more. But again, this is a very similar plan to what we've been operating since 2011, I think, in the plan prior to that also. I don't think there's any surprises in this. So again, they can find it on their website. Um, anybody have any questions? Okay. I don't have any questions. I don't right now, no. Bill? Yeah, thanks, gentlemen. Appreciate the great work. And, and this is, uh, again, the uh, tip of the spear of uh, first responder and emergency management. Uh, that's your bread and butter. That's what you do in addition to the, your, uh, your daily uh, operational requisites. And I would add that, uh, um, according to the memo, uh, there were no members of the general public or anyone outside of the committee members that attended. Any of the I believe members. a couple times there were people sitting in the audience there a were, few times, were okay. uh, but it was minimal okay, participation. Minimal. So again, it's on the website, great work, and um, if it uh, does go down, uh, we know you guys will be there. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, let's hope we don't need any emergency services anytime too soon, but I think we can all rest assured that we're in good hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And as you said, this is the first. We have two more meetings. We have to have a, have a two week two two week comment period. Okay. I so would recommend, Mr. Chairman, that you may want to set aside time on your agenda for uh, right. hazard mitigation plan commentary period, separate from your normal. Right. Okay, and that that'll actually be almost three weeks because two weeks is uh, we have a holiday in between. Day, we have a holiday in between, yep. so it'll be uh, the Monday following Columbus Day weekend or Columbus Day. So we'll do it then. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> the next appointment was for a Susan Witcher, and I received a uh, message that uh, she would like to postpone it till ten three, as uh, she was not feeling well tonight, so she she wouldn't be able to make the meeting. So, the next thing is the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, we believe that the closing date for regular warrant articles is January 13, 2017. We'll continue to advise everyone as to the, fi the actual final date as soon as they are confirmed. We have not received the Secretary of State's calendar on that yet. Please be sure that you, uh, for petitions that you have the signatures, the printed name, and the address of the person who signed, and that they are registered voters. 25 registered voter signatures are required. All petitions are to be submitted to the selectman's office. Uh, we believe that there will be that the opening and closing dates for the petition for articles for the zoning ordinance can be submitted between November 14th and December 14th, 2016. Again, we will continue to confirm that as soon as we receive the Secretary of State's calendar, which gives us the actual dates. Um, after that closing date, no, no articles will be accepted for amendments to the zoning ordinance by statute. Please submit those zoning ordinances to the Board of Selectmen not later than the closing date. Uh, the Army Corps of Engineers continues to work on the North Jetty next to the Hampton State Park. To our knowledge, no other work is planned either in the river or in the harbor by the Corps of Engineers. We have had a number of questions uh, that have been funded towards the office asking whether or not that work is going to expand further in that area, and it is not. They are only working on that one jetty. It was scheduled to be done last year, uh, but due to limitations and some emergency procedures that the Corps had to do, uh, they were not able to get to it until this month. 
That's it, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for the town manager? Regina. I don't have anything, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Any, uh, last week you talked about the uh, dog waste problem. I haven't had a single dog call yet. I haven't had a single <laughs> dog call. So we haven't had any more, I mean, complaints or anything or we have not uh, we continue to uh, to monitor um, every time we go to a catch basin of course we try to see what's in it and because we have to clean them we clean all catch basins once every two years so uh, Falcone Circle was the last one we found with dog waste in one of the one of the manholes or one of the catch basins and we'll continue to uh, find and clean as need be um, I think people need to understand that that once we clean a catch basin, uh, because water comes in because of rain and then goes out the, the, the drain pipe out of the catch basin to an outfall, uh, we then are required to clean everything all the way to the outfall and clean the outfall. In some cases, we have found um, what I would describe as uh, large piles of dog waste at the end of outfall. So uh, when the new MS4 requirements come out from the EPA, we're going to be required to test each of those uh, catch basins and each of those uh, outfalls. And if we find something wrong, there's an extensive program to rectify that and to, to do additional reports to the federal government and the state government. Um, it's going to be an expensive proposition if people continue to pollute uh, the, the drainage system in town. I mean, a lot of people, after our last meeting, you talking about it, were outraged that people are doing that and didn't realize what, how much of a problem it was. And so I think a lot more people have becoming aware of it and I, I think it's their tax dollars and we don't want to spend them right. for that purpose right quite frankly right and I just have one other question on the uh, the drought situation we're keeping you know, I think as much publicity as we do on the drought that people know that Max did a good not there did a good article uh, Sunday's paper I think it was yes on the on the drought situation and that, that it's dra it's severe it's not just a drought it's severe and it's expected to go into next year and be a problem it is and hopefully we'll get lots of snow hopefully and it will bring the water tables back up and uh, as it melts and and uh, the continued rain we're going to have rain I believe tomorrow is the forecast so hopefully that will continue on a regular basis over the, the remainder of the year so that we can uh, take care of the need for the outside watering and building up the groundwater table, which is Right now, people should be still conserving. They should be doing everything in their power to conserve. Uh, no half-hour showers. Uh, you know, five minutes is plenty. Uh, you need to work kind of fast, but that's okay. Yep. Uh, it'll stay warm on these nice cold mornings. Uh, uh, you, you need to... Um, I think one of the biggest complaints I hear from water officials is that people... When they brush their teeth, they just turn the water on and leave it running for five minutes while they take care of their, their ablutions in the morning, and that's, that's a waste of water. You're not using that water for anything. Uh, don't do that. Just turn it on as you need it. That saves a lot of water in itself. Right. Keep an eye on your toilets. Um, if you think you have a toilet leak, one of the old tricks that we used to use is to drop a little bit of food coloring in the tank. And if the toilet isn't used and there's food coloring in the in the in the uh, the toilet itself, after a period of time, you have a leak, and you should be investigating how to fix that. So that's a waste of water as well. Right, because I think it's important. Because I think a lot of people just think, I'm not, I can't water my lawn. Right. It's but everything else is okay, and it's not. No, it's, it's not. It, and we're worried that if we run out of supply and we have a fire, we're in trouble. It's a it's a serious problem. It's a serious um, problem. It's not a it's not a minor problem. I just want to stress that so that people realize it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, the A Street fire took something in the order of two million gallons to put out. That's that's a lot. That's uh, that's equal to almost equal to the total pumping capacity of town. That's that's a lot of water. <coughs> yeah. So when you need it, you got to have it. Mr. Bean, I'm sure you know something about GI showers. I don't know if you want to. Five minutes. Uh, I don't know what you're doing in there, Rusty, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have no comments, and thank you very much. <clears throat> um, I'm going to forget what I was going to say. Um, the, oh, I did hear that they're having a similar problem with the dog waste in rye. I'm not really surprised. People find it convenient 
as opposed to taking it home when they pick it up? Because we're finding a lot of these in, in the pickup bags that people have, the plastic bags they use to pick up the, the, the droppings from their dogs. Um, but unfortunately, they're placing them in positions where it's going to cause pollution and it's going to endanger water supplies at some point. It's going to cause some real problems. Uh, I don't think anybody wants that in their drinking water. But that's what they're doing. They're dropping it down the drains. And, and that's, that's a real, real serious problem. <clears throat> Thank you for your report. Thank you, sir. We also had that, that letter from the town uh, clerk. I, I did have a, a communication, which I think I've given to all of you from the town clerk. Uh, she would like to, she's been having some problems with uh, folks that come in and, and, and uh, register their cars. And uh, they've either forgotten their checkbook or they don't have enough cash on them. Uh, she'd like to put an ATM upstairs in the town hall. Uh, we make a little bit of money off of that when it's here. Um, it, we're not responsible for it. We don't have to insure it. If somebody else does that, uh, somebody else maintains it, somebody else uh, does all the repair, any and all repair work on it. Um, they also stock it. They have a way of queuing the machine to find out how much cash, it, cash has been taken out, and they can do that electronically. Uh, but they would like permission to install it upstairs. There's no cost to the town. Uh, and there is a 75 cent uh, transaction fee that comes to the town every time somebody does a transaction there. I, and I, I believe they take all the liability. They do. It's all, we're completely insured and indemnified. That none of it's on the town. And talking with the town clerk, um, you know, it's not bad if you're going to, if you've got hundred dollars and you get because they, they charge 2.7 percent for a fee credit card fee and if you're doing a hundred dollars that's not bad but when you start doing registrations of a thousand or twelve hundred dollars then you're talking thousand dollars you're talking twenty seven dollars just more <coughs> that's costing these people where with with a machine like this it wouldn't might not cost them as much true so i have a couple of other things mr chairman if the board would like to hear them do we need a uh Motion on that? I think that? you need a motion to consent to it, yes. Any, any questions first? Yeah, I, I do. Is, 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 that a, is that something that should go out to bid for the maximum return to the town? Uh, I just want to close that. That's hurdle. pretty standard fee. Is, is it? Yeah, it is. I, and, and I believe that. I just want yeah. to make sure that we address that, that yeah. we couldn't get a dollar from some firm. We get a knock on the door, we sign a contract, and then... Oh, well, we can certainly ask. Yeah, and, I, and I'm... I'm very much in favor of it. It's, yeah. it's mandatory, I'm sure, for up there. So I support it, but I just want to oh, make yeah. sure it's, it almost... We're getting the best bang for the buck. Exactly. Yeah. So. As long as we don't have any liability, it doesn't cost us any money. No, uh, nothing. No problem. I'll make the motion. Okay, motion by Rick. I'll second it. Second by Jim. With the, with the understanding that we, we do look at and see if, make sure we, we can get a better pay. offer. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, I, I did have a citizen come in this morning, and I think a lot of people received this uh, over the over the weekend. Uh, it deals with the uh, the race that's coming on October 2nd, and uh, the only question I, that, that was brought to our attention today was that they were hoping that the roads are not closed off all day because people have to come and go for their properties. And my understanding the last time the board addressed this, that they would not be that people would be let in and out on a regular basis so that they could get to and from their homes to conduct their business uh, on Sunday. Uh, a lot of people going to church, a lot of people going shopping, et cetera, et cetera. There may be some minor inconveniences, but in not, general? Not like it was last time where in some areas the roads were closed for several hours. Right. That's, that's not what they're up to. Uh, and I think they're working very hard on that. The other call I had today was from a gentleman who owns property down in the uh, the numbered streets, and uh, he has a, a number of restrictions that were placed on the property. This was Old Town property, mind you. Um, they're going to be in. They're, they're going to be putting an addition on their on their home uh, down there. That's I believe it's a summertime home. It's not a full time home yet, um, and they want to come within seven feet of the sewer main that's there. And Public Works has said they would prefer to have ten feet of clearance. Uh, and I told him to address a letter to the Board of Selectmen explaining specifically what he wants, that my thought was that this needs to go to town meeting because it's a removal of a restriction, a deed restriction that was placed on by the town, and only the town meeting can do that. But I asked him to please write you and explain to the board what his thoughts are and what he would like to do, and then you can hear from Public Works. 
and their concerns and uh, somehow maybe reach a decision on what needs to be done, whether it needs to go to town meeting or whether it's a variable thing that can be done here. So that, that, that may be coming in for you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Old business. Regina? Um, no, I just wanted to say that I attended the NHMA legislative conference on Friday. That was quite interesting, and I got to meet a lot of uh, other elected officials in the municipalities, and pretty much with the exception of, I think, one uh, proposed legislative bill, every, everyone voted the way that uh, we voted in, uh, I think it was a meeting two weeks ago when we voted on the proposed bills. So it looks like it uh, went well for the town. Jim? Uh, we're under old business. Yep. Uh, do you want me to bring up? Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's a good time to bring it up. It's just something that we've done in the past. Okay, okay, so it's under old business. You know, I, I want to make a, a motion to move that all communication to and from the budget committee, or any committee actually, be received and sent in writing in the following manner. From the chair of the budget committee to the selectman's representative to the budget committee, then from the selectman's representative to the chair of the selectmen, then to the board of selectmen. Communications from the board of selectmen to the budget committee shall be from the chair to the board of the selectmen, to the selectman's representative to the budget committee, to the chairman of the budget committee. And it's just uh, formalizing the line, the line of command, the chain of command, so that things don't get messed up and we don't have individual members coming and asking for things that should be gone through a chain of command. So that's the motion that I would like to make, and I think it should hold for any committee. And, it, and it's a, I believe it's the same way we did it last year. It is the same way we did it last year, I believe. Okay. Yeah. I'll second it. So we have a motion and a second. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Any other old business? Phil? Rick, go ahead. Oh, Rick. <clears throat> well, I just wanted to bring this up, and I, this letter was sent to Regina from um, Jennifer Hale. In looking, and this is regards to what um, Chuck Rage was talking about, about a sidewalk along Brown Ave. In looking at the cost of an addition of a sidewalk along Brown Ave to connect with the existing sidewalk on Brown Ave at Island Path to Ashworth Avenue, unfortunately, it's not as straightforward as she had been thinking based on the existing right-of-way it is likely that there would need to be land acquisition in order to properly locate a sidewalk especially along the stretch between island path and susan lane in addition in the area where there is a guardrail there may need to be fill wetland in order to get a five foot ada compliant sidewalk also, there are utility poles currently right behind the guardrail that would be within, excuse me, the proposed sidewalk, which may need to be moved. Items that would need to be addressed once the survey is complete. With that, there are, she has put together some numbers, truly rough estimates below. Hope this helps. Survey and engineering, 48,500, land acquisition, 15,000 placeholder value only construction 220,000 maybe more depending on the cost to relocate electrical poles a contingency of 44,000 comes to a total cost of 700 and I mean, 327,500 and this is from Jennifer Hale from the deputy director of public works and so this is just an initial first look at what something like that would cost. And what I question, is this something that um, someone should bring forward as a warrant article? It would have to be a warrant article, yes, sir. Yeah. So um, would you suggest that these people that are down there, there's a number of them, um, would be better to get a warrant article or is this something that maybe we could consider as the board of select <clears throat> they could petition to do that uh, when the when these the sums are, are actually stabilized mm -hmm. um, it has any construction that we do is going to have to meet ADA requirements by federal law so it's going to have to be a five foot wide sidewalk probably with a raised curb uh, <clears throat> and 
I think Jennifer said in her memorandum that there are technically some federal wetlands in that area uh, that will have to be reckoned with and federal permits will have to be obtained in order to build the sidewalk in addition to other requirements. But yeah, I, I and somebody should sit down actually with Public Works, with Jen and with uh, Chris, uh, our director, uh, and actually work out the details of what really needs to be in that warrant article so that it's done correctly. Mm -hmm. And I just want to bring the town customarily just doesn't put a path in. A path would not be ADA compliant, and, and that's a problem because anybody who was hurt on it, we'd automatically be liable regardless of whether it was in perfect condition or not. So that's something we wouldn't do. Uh, we, we, I recommend not to do it because of the liability involved. Okay, thank you. A number of times we've done warrant articles on sidewalks in this town. I think, yeah. I think that's the best Well, I've way to seen go. it many times, and that's right. why I suggested that's that. That's And that's what I told Chuck when I first talked with him. Um, and uh, I'll bring this up to him okay. so that he can get back in touch with these people. And well, there like was a guy that I was, I've been trying to get a hold of. I don't know whether he went to Florida, and I just happened to run into him one day at the town hall, and I was going to get together with him because I'm told him I'm down there like yeah. twice a day in that area. He's one of, it's, that's probably one of them. It's like Because uh, I know the Lane, one I that think. I talked or was in touch with was also going to Florida. But there's a number of people. I've been brought, this has been brought up many times, and that's why I think that this is uh, something that really should be a Warren article. Other people have done it in the past. Sometimes it's successful, sometimes it isn't. But, you know, we could always, where it would be money that would be considered, uh, we're going to take a position as a Board of Selectmen, whether we su would support this or not. So if anyone came in with something like this, the Board definitely would take a position. Thank you. It's a tough Thank street you. because it was it's a, such an old street and such a narrow street that yeah. uh, it is. Well, the portion you're talking about was given to the town, per se, um, but only the width of the existing street. So everything else is private property on both sides. So uh, in order to build a sidewalk there, you either have to rest further restrict the width of the street by probably five and a quarter feet, or you have to take additional land off the side by purchase. Um, in order to put the sidewalk in, but you have no land other than what's the actual paved surface of the roadway. Yeah. Now, does ever, um, like, I know that the uh, Beach Precinct has their own warrant articles that they have when they have their own meeting, but t would it be possible for the Beach Precinct to take <clears throat> a position and do, like, Get the 25 voters on behalf of the Beach Precinct recommending this to, as a sure. warrant article? Absolutely. The so Beach that, Precinct in the past <coughs> has accepted, I can't think of the year, but I did read it, uh, has accepted all the requirements and the statute for things a precinct can do, and one of those is to build sidewalks. So they could appropriate money towards that purpose. I'm sure they don't want to appropriate the money, but I mean, well, they could. It, but they, I mean, they could submit. They could submit it on they behalf submit of. Warrant article. Yep. Yeah. Sure. And maybe they'll contribute. You know, that's something too. that could be up for yep. conversation. Absolutely. Thank you. Anything else on old business? New business. We have the Health Trust Membership Agreement, the approval and authorization of the town manager to sign. That's our annual agreement to continue the health uh, policies that we have for all of our employees under the union contracts and under the personnel policy. So moved to approve and sign. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. We have the uh, Bicentennial Wall Investigation Contract. I yield to the director. I was wondering why he was sitting in the back yeah, of the room. Yeah, he was too. I thought he was just coming to hear what we had to say tonight. He, he's, he's here as an attractive uh, pertinence to the building. <laughs> Yeah, I come for the uh, entertainment value. <laughs> <laughs> In keeping with the town's uh, purchasing policy, and especially for um, with respect to engineering services, uh, the department uh, requested proposals from geotechnical slash engineering firms for uh, an investigation phase uh, looking at our section of seawall down by Bicentennial Park. Um, 
we received five proposals. We ended up interviewing three of the five firms. In the end, we selected tie and bond. Um, that's in keeping, that process is in keeping with the Brooks Act, Federal Act for Procurement of uh, Engineering Services, where you don't focus on price, but you do focus on the, the expertise of the firm. Um, both Jennifer and I were in agreement that Ty and Bond, given their past experience, their current staffing, uh, they had the best group uh, uh, for reviewing this uh, seawall and uh, making some recommendations. And we liked their approach of how they would uh, handle the investigative phase and come up with alternatives and then cost that out. So we're recommending uh, we uh, did solicit a contract from them. I believe the contract came to 82 of the 85,000. And um, that's what we have before you. Any questions, Regina? No questions. Do you feel that they're the best to do, to perform the work down at uh, Bicentennial? Yes, because um, they've done uh, other work, uh, specifically up at Northampton, their, uh, their beach wall. And um, there, there's, uh, I believe, inc also included a handicap ramp in the end, but that was a, a specific request to the state in that location. Um, yeah, we, we definitely do like um, their expertise. The other thing that they brought to the table when they came is they'd already done a, a say, a healthy amount, but they had all done some investigative work. A lot of them had contacted the Coast Guard's engineering office in Boston. They had the old Coast Guard plans. So they, they, they already knew what they were talking about. And one of the things that really intrigued us about the uh, tie and bond process was they also wanted to test out the sand. Um, the, the, there's a process in, in dealing with concrete where if you use the wrong stone, it continues to react. The, the concrete itself, the cement, continues to react with the, the stone material and or its environment and continues to expand. Uh, they have that same issue over at the Pease, um, the tarmac where they park all the aircraft. It actually lengthens every single year, and they have to go in and cut joints in it and actually take out part of the, uh, the tarmac. They wanted to use, there's being work done at UNH um, where you can actually bring them a sample and they'll run it through all their test <coughs> metrics to make sure that, for instance, the sand that we have down at the beach in that particular location won't aid in the, if you will, the deterioration or accelerate the deterioration when we do end up building it. And that was, that was just one of the, the aspects that we really liked about their proposal. Oh, I don't have any further questions. It's something that definitely needs to be done. So. Jim? If it's her, uh, the whole process was done properly, the whole following all the... Yeah, with five of them. Um, they all submitted proposals. Jennifer and I read them independently, and then we got together one morning and said, okay, which, top, which three do you want to interview? Uh, we agreed on the top three to interview, um, and then sat down, I think, a day after we'd completed all the interviews, and... I said, well, this is my first, and we just wrote, basically wrote them on paper, and we both had the same firm as first for and some of the similar reasons. If we, uh, if you award this, uh, how long, when would they be able to get started, and how long? Do they would start? actually get started this fall, okay. especially with a process of probably the borings and maybe some survey work, and then there would be some what I call geophysical because there's questions amongst the um, – everybody how much of the old wall remains because part of the wall that this is actually tied into is actually the foundation for the old coast guard station and what condition is that in and you know the early picture shows actually a cedar timbers making up the wall uh, that's how far back some of the research was and then it shows a partial removal of that and cement walls put in and then it, when they put in this phase of what you see today, there was a partial removal of that. So that everybody's really leery as to what the partial actually means. And then another aspect that they brought up to it, it's um, not so much the wave action being able to destroy the wall, but when a wall like this gets overtopped, there's, it actually creates a swirling action behind the wall. And if all the stone, all the sand behind the wall was 
pushed away, make the wall tip right over. It wouldn't, wouldn't take anything at that point to tip it over. So those are some of the design things that, you know, so that was really obvious in talking with at least the top three, that they had a lot of experience in those types of situations. Um, so when would they be ready with a cost estimate? How long would that take? I mean, would, would this be thinking about getting a warrant article this year or? We are projecting a warrant article for this coming town meeting. Whether or not that can actually be accomplished will depend upon the engineering work and how quickly it could be done. Okay. The other thing is there's a list of 30 warrant articles that I brought forward for, or Fred and I have brought forward half of them he authored, the other half I authored, um, a whopping dollar amount. And it's obvious that it that all cannot be done in the same right. uh, year. Um, so the seawall is one of those things on that we'll have to make a group decision whether we move forward in this fiscal year or the following fiscal year. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. The total amount uh, for the Warren article that was approved? 85. 85, got it. Uh, and. Um, um, reading is, is, I'm sure the board has your, uh, your deputy's 21 September letter. Mm -hmm. The RFQ that you have chosen it have full confidence in both you and the deputy. Uh, what I would like is to have some uh, some vision on what the other bids look like and. I don't have any information on that. Could you expound on that? And I trust that uh, we can give you the qual statement, but we have no dollar figures from any of those firms. From any other firm. This is the only firm that right. put the money. Because under the Brooks Act's process, you you try and negotiate with the person or the the firm that would give you what you feel would be the best product, the best outcome. If you can't negotiate a what you consider a fair contract, then you're and could you just expound for the uh, public's uh, um, uh, benefit on the qualifications, experience, and reputation of this firm uh, and why you chose that, in addition to the fact that they were the only ones to bring in a price? Ty and Bond, located in Portsmouth, is the former Apple Door Engineering, been around for, I don't have their quals in front of me, but if it would be 30 years. Um, huge experience in marine engineering, uh, waterfront engineering. That, I have to admit, as an engineer, is its own specialty unto itself, and something I would never attempt. I have no expertise in <coughs> big water hydraulics, I call it, wave action, disbursement, uh, wave energy. Um, they've done work for the Sprague energies of the world for, you know, uh, docks and piers for bringing ships up. Um, as I said, the seawall in Northampton, there was a full host of all out throughout New England, very um, in-depth experience. That was the other thing is that um, doing, let's say, a, a project uh, at Fort Lauderdale Beach is not the same as doing a project on uh, Place Cove or Bicentennial Park, uh, radically different. And the other thing is the uh, inundation models that they were going to be using. So um, it was that, that depth of experience. The other firms that we, we looked at or we spoke with were GZA, and they had done a project most recently in Portsmouth. Um, very qualified group. Um, but as they say, time bond raised a few more things. For instance, the historical perspective and the silica uh, soil interaction that we liked, and I'm trying to think for the life of me who the third firm was. It'll come to me tonight at 11 o'clock. <laughs> Just arrive. Uh, I can't remember off the, the, but they were five, I mean, the right peers put in for GZA, tie and bond. Um, Got it. Thank you. Uh, you've you've uh, shed light on that, not only for the board, but for the public, and it's good information and have the fullest confidence in both you and the deputy, and, uh, and notwithstanding operational uh, tempo, you had a myriad uh, other uh, challenges this late summer season and early autumn, and, and it, we're, we're very grateful for your service, and I enthusiastically uh, support your recommendation and support the motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick? So, <clears throat> did this tie and bond, they... Um, took over Appledore? 
actually Ty and Bond took them over as a as more of a corporate entity, and and they actually when they did the, the same key people that were with Apple Door are with Ty and Bond. It was just if you will a name change. Yeah, because Apple Door is a name that we've worked with many times here. <coughs> at the Board of Selectmen. And if you look at the resumes there, you know, everybody in the engineering world, they, they come from the uh, prior history. I worked at Kimball Chase back in the 70s and 80s. I worked at uh, Wright Pierce when they were up out of their Portland office. So it's, it's uh, this is not a newbie firm. This is not a, a bunch of people cutting their teeth on, on our seawall. Um, that was the other thing um, that's coming to mind. There was a seawall down in Mass. It, it, it could have been identical to ours, and it showed the same thing, what they were going up four feet so that they could stay level uh, with some other improvements that were done. So, yeah, we're, we're fully confident in them. Thank you. So, Phil, you made a motion to? To approve the uh, uh, recommendation. Second. Director. Motion by Phil, seconded by Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. While you're here, just how are we on the... Uh, mill dam on uh... borings were done I want to say a week week and a half ago the wetlands has been done they've gotten the additional topographic information that they wanted uh, we have it set up that probably in October we're going to have another if you all scoping meeting or well, not a, we've already had the scoping meeting but our first this is what we found this is what we're leaning towards as uh, alter alternatives and the process will keep moving uh, I've just heard from people curious as to where where it is and how things are going yeah. uh, these are Warren articles that the voters have uh, graciously passed and, and I think it's good time every once in a while we have an update on some of those to let them know where they're going so Definitely. thank you we do have a spreadsheet that I can send back through uh, Fred it tracks the 15 or so projects we have ongoing and where we stand with those both funding wise and uh, process wise maybe the next time you're in for your your department update we can update the, the sure. public just so they know yep. I think it's important that when people vote on Warren articles uh, obviously they voted on them because they have an interest in them and I think that if we can have some updates for them I think they'd, they'd appreciate that so would agree very good thank you all set thank you director don't uh, don't go away I know I'm going right to there front row <laughs> so we have closing comments any closing comments I, don't have I would just like to reiterate that when people go to a public forum to speak, that they have their facts correct before they speak, good. that they double check, and so that we're not presenting the public with misinformation. Thank you. I would like to uh, reiterate and reemphasize and uh, support Jim's uh, um, assertions tonight. And we're, we're getting into that time of season. And uh, thank you, Jim, for bringing that up. And thank you, uh, Rusty or Mr. Chairman, for uh, reinforcing what are uh, just professional lines of communication that uh, make the good ship Hampton run very, very smoothly, that enhances transparency, and we all know what each other is talking about. Thank you. It's campaign season, and some people like to shoot from the hip. <laughs> <laughs> Outro. <Touché>. Uh, <laughs> seeing that, before we have a motion to ad uh, adjourn, we need a non-public. Uh, 91A, colon 3, Roman 2, sections A and D. I make that motion. Jim makes that motion. Second, Second by that, we need a roll call vote. Phil? Yes, sir. Rick? Yay. Yes. Regina? Jim? Yes. Me? Yes. And I'd ask uh, the Public Works Director to stay for item number D, uh, which deals with... Max, that was a good article on the drought. Oh, thanks. Rather dry. Nice haircut. Rather dry. <laughs> <laughs> Rather dry. <laughs> that's what... That's what... Huh. The, the, that was good. That was good.